Hi, I'm Dana, and I'm very late to the party at this point, but I really wanted to make a video about love on the spectrum, because I've got thoughts and opinions about it, and I like to share them on the internet because I don't talk to real people. So that's what I'm doing today. This video is just going to be a bunch of thoughts and opinions and what I thought of the show. So if you haven't watched it, there's probably not going to be any spoilers because I can't remember anyone's names. And I'm also talking about my overall opinions on the whole show, rather than like individual people, you know, I'm not trying to shit on anyone, essentially. So with that out of the way, let's just get into it. I want to start with what I liked. And the first thing is the people. The people on the show have been really well cast for, I suppose. Do you cast for a reality show? I like the people that are in it. I think they've chosen really nice people, people that are interesting to watch, people that are interesting to learn about. And especially being autistic, it's really nice to see other autistic people on TV. So I really liked that. You know, they all seem like very genuine people. And that's nice to see. Like a lot of reality TV especially is so fake. It's so fake and the people are acting or it's scripted or whatever else. And I just don't get that vibe with this show. I think the people on it, you know, they're there for a reason. They know why they're there and that's what they're going for. There's no pretense or, or pissing around. They're just nice, genuine, honest people looking for love. And that's lovely. And alongside that, I really like that the show, in my opinion, is sort of normalising having autistic traits and being autistic alongside the idea of like autistic people also date <laughs> like personally i've been in a relationship for eight years and people are still surprised when they find out that i'm both autistic and in a long-term like steady stable nice relationship people it's it's the whole disability thing people don't think that people with disabilities date and i think that's much more prominent with people with physical disabilities where people are like oh she's in a wheelchair so she doesn't date anyone but you definitely see it with neurodivergencies as well and autism especially, I think, is considered, like, an awkward thing. You're an awkward person, so you're not going to go on any dates. And that's obviously not true for, like, any disabled person. You know, if you want to, you can go on dates regardless. And I think it's nice to show that on television, I guess. And alongside showing autistic traits, I really like that they show sort of a diverse area of the spectrum. I'm not a big fan of, like, the whole spectrum thing, because it just doesn't actually describe us very well but in this case that's what I'm going to use because I don't have a better word and I, I do think it shows like a good array of different types of people on the spectrum you know there's some people that I really really related to and some hey now and some people that I like related to a bit less because they're higher support needs or just a little bit you know not like me I didn't relate to them but it was still nice to really see like a diversity in what autism can be and how autistic people can be and I feel like we don't see it an awful lot especially having like women on there and having like you know some of them are very awkward <laughs> like I said I don't want to shit on anyone but some some of them are very awkward and some of them are much less awkward and it's nice to see people masking I suppose it's nice to see people trying their best to be neurotypical and it's nice to see the people that are just their normal autistic selves regardless. It's nice to see the diversity of what autistic people can be and I think it's really important to sort of show that to the neurotypicals to remove this idea of the straight white man that likes trains or planes and that's autism when it's not. And the final thing that I actually liked was Jodie, the relationship coach. I thought she was great. She approached everyone like they were just just another person as we should be approached you know I I don't like this whole thing of praising people for doing the bare minimum like when when someone's like oh yeah I'm a trans ally it's like well yeah you should be but all the same I know that sometimes when I've told people I'm autistic I'm immediately infantilized and treated like a bit of an idiot and it's not nice so it was really pleasant to see someone that goes in knowing full well that these people are autistic some of them are very obviously autistic in their social levels and everything and she still just approaches them with the kindness and respect that every person deserves to have. And I also thought that she actually gave them good advice. Like, I've, I've been given a lot of different social advice over the years, and not an awful lot of it's benefited me. If, if anything, a lot of it made me even more anxious to socialise, because I was like, there's more to remember, there's more that I don't know. So it was really nice to see someone sort of, I don't want to say educate, but just sort of, help autistic people to realise the best ways to behave with other people, I guess. I don't know if that was a good way to say it, but I just thought she was really great. 
I liked the way that she explained things. I liked that I felt like she understood to it, like as much as she can as a neurotypical person, I assume, I could be wrong. I felt like she understood like autism as much as you can and understood how to accurately help autistic people to be more social and have better social skills and the like without shaming us or acting like the way that we are isn't good enough. It's, that's the way to word it. It felt like she was giving them additional skills rather than trying to take this away or make them do that. It just felt like she was giving them additional skills in a really nice and respectful and kind way. And that's what a lot of us need, I think. I liked her a lot. However, I have seen other people point out, and I also think that some of the language in it wasn't ideal. And and this isn't like a full dislike, because I feel like the majority of time when it comes to like autism first or person first language, it's up to the person. Like, it's, you know, a, not the neurotypical person, it's up to the autistic person. So I'm not going to correct anyone on the show that says that they have autism instead of calling themselves autistic. That's entirely a personal choice to any autistic person. And it's fine for them to say that. However, on the other side of that, I am a bit torn on it. Because I think that when you're essentially putting out a show that is going to give people an idea of what autism is and what it's like to be autistic, it's probably best to use the language that we prefer, like for the most part. Obviously, it's not what everyone prefers, or we wouldn't have to talk about this at all. But that's why it's difficult. It's not the language I personally prefer. But I think it's a case of the people on the show are using it that are autistic. The people around them are picking up on what they prefer to use and what they feel comfortable with. And for that, like, it's fine. It's not like a big dislike. It's just a little, I'm not a fan of that. You know, it's fine, but I'm, I didn't love it. One of my main issues, as often is, was the parents and like the, just the general families and support systems that the autistic people in the show have around them. I, you know, again, I don't want to shit on anyone. Their families are all obviously love them a lot and are really nice to them. And, you know, they're good, close families that everyone deserves to have as much as many of us don't. You know, I don't want to just shit all over them. But especially with some of the men in it, I feel that their families let them have either a very simple like black and white view of what a relationship is and what love is to the point where they're obviously not super happy being single and they seem to think that having a relationship is going to fix that and they're going to be so happy and everything's going to be absolutely perfect you know completely splendid or whatever it was and that's not how relationships work and then that makes me think like well what about when they get into a relationship and this girl hasn't made them super happy are they just gonna dump him, start dating again? Are they going to become like actually depressed or more unhappy because the way it, they expected it to hasn't happened? You know, I think it's just a real concern. And I think that's where the families need to come in, especially those that have got parents that are still together and sort of just have a sit down talk about like what love is, what relationships are, what questions do you have? You know, like especially one of them stood out to me because he was very clear and that he wanted a girl next door who's like nice and funny that he can marry and it's like you're totally allowed to want that you're totally allowed to go out looking for marriage I'm not here to tell anyone what they should and shouldn't want but also that's probably not gonna happen is it he's not gonna like go on a, a first date with a girl and then boom marriage and I know he wasn't quite expecting it like after the first date but he obviously expects that he'll date a few girls he'll find the one he'll get married and it's like you gotta wait a bit, you've gotta take it slow, you've gotta get to know the person, you've gotta know what they want out of the relationship. You know, I think being autistic, like this wasn't stuff I was thinking about before I was in the relationship, so I get it. I did think, you know, I was a depressed little 16 year old when I met my boyfriend, and I was very much, well, he's my knight in shining armor, and I'm never going to feel any sort of sadness again. And I've I've had to learn that's not the case, that's not how relationships work. But it would have been real nice if someone had like spoken to me about that instead of me having to learn it the painful, horrible way when I was like, why do I have a boyfriend and still be depressed? You know, I just, I only dislike it because I don't want to see what happened to me happen to other people. It was a really dark time for me. And I think it's really important when like a lot of us, like I'm talking about myself here more so than like the entire autistic community, which I never try to talk for all of us. But I think for a lot of us, we do very much think in black and white. It's, it's, I'm not happy in a relationship so if I get a relationship I'll be happy if this isn't working then this will and it's just not the case and 
especially when they've got their parents that they're obviously close with and their parents obviously really, really care for them. They could do with explaining that. And alongside that, again, I don't want to shit on anyone, but I did get sort of misogyny vibes from some of the lads on it. And I don't think any of them are bad people. I don't think any of them are bad men. You know, I think they've been relatively sheltered in some ways, you know, in that they've not had relationships. They've not met many girls. They've not had many romantic situations with girls or other people in general. So they haven't learned. And that's, you know, I'm not trying to shit on anyone. But there is like little hinges of misogyny with many of the men in what they want from a woman. And again, you know, there's going to be, there's probably a woman out there looking for the same thing. I'm not saying that they're wrong at all. But I don't feel like all of them have a full view of women being people, <laughs> you know? And that's easy to do. I definitely have like a glamorized view of, of what, I mean, I'm by as heck, so I had idealized views of what both men and women are in like romantic situations. And you have to very quickly learn that a woman is a full ass person. <laughs> like she's not just nice hair and nice lips for you to kiss, you know? They are full ass people with emotions and feelings and dreams and things they wanna do and things they wanna be. And I don't feel like they quite have a full grasp of that. And like I say, it's not because they're bad people or they're bad men or they want to be sexist. It's just because they haven't learned yet. They haven't spent many time in the situations that will teach them that. But again, they're clearly close with their parents. So I don't understand why their parents haven't said at some point, like, hey, this isn't really how you want to talk about women. This isn't really how you want to treat women. This isn't what a woman is. You know, it's, I guess it's less like something that I dislike about the show. And more so that I feel a lot of the time, like myself included and, and majority talking about myself once again, I feel like life would be a lot easier if people actually explained these things to us instead of leaving us to find out the hard way. And, you know, I get that experiences are important. It is important to make your own mistakes and learn from them. But if I had a son and I thought he was going to go out and be a little bit shitty to a woman because he doesn't know any better, I'd have a chat with him and try and make sure that doesn't happen. Because it's not just his mistake, it's his mistake that's going to affect another person. And it could affect them really negatively, you know? So yeah, I've, I've been on that topic a while, but I think I've gotten out my full opinion on that. I also didn't particularly like the way that they pair up some of the couples and some of the date situations that they have. Like, this is a difficult area for me to talk about because I would not go on a show like this. It, the idea of it makes me feel physically sick. There's few things that make me more anxious and awkward than a first date to then film that first date. Ugh, no, not a chance. But you know, like if you're organising dates on a dating show, you, I just think that you should be organising them better because some of the people are clearly not compatible. And in regards to like the situations, speed dating for autistic people, you, you want them to talk to like lots of people in a you know, like, I'll give that many of the autistic people on there are already doing more than I can and more, like, than, than I fucking do. You know, I'm not trying to shit on them. I'm not really trying to, like, shit on any aspect of the show. It is just my thoughts and opinions. But I just don't feel like that's the best situation to put an autistic person in, for them to show themselves and who they are and how they are enough to other people to, to be likeable. You know, like, maybe it's just me and my insecurities, but I know full well that by the second person, that mask is on heavy and I'm not being myself and I'm very uncomfortable. So I'm not going to get any dates from it because they're not even seeing who I am. And if I do get a date from it, do I then have to like fully mask every time I see them? You know, it's just going to be a whole thing in my opinion. <laughs> but, you know, it's they're professionals. Hopefully they know what they're doing. Hopefully the people that went on blind dates and blind date speed dates, hopefully the people that went on speed dates and did enjoy it and wanted to do that. But I kind of don't see it. <laughs> the final thing I disliked is another one that I'm a bit torn on. Because on the one hand, I do think it kind of made us look a little... It kind of made being autistic and trying to date as an autistic person into a bit of a sideshow. It's a little, oh, come look at come look at these really awkward, cringy people trying to date people. You know, it just feels like a bit of an attraction for the neurotypicals more so than something that's actually helping autistic people. But on the other hand of that... The autistic people signed up for it they wanted to do it so it's up to them and I do think that it's going to show a better 
picture of what autism is to people. It's going to give a wider understanding of how autistic people can be. And you know, maybe one day I'll stop getting comments that I can't be autistic because I'm a girl. <laughs> no, but I just, it makes me uncomfortable to see neurotypical people talking about it. And again, this might just be my own issues. I'm not saying like it's an issue with the show or an issue with neurotypical people. I just, when neurotypical people talk about it, and even honestly, some neurodivergent people, it does just feel like the people in the show are just these cringy little sideshow attractions to be laughed at and pointed at. And oh, look how cringy he is. Oh, he's like a kid. Oh, look at how he talks. And, you know, some of the stuff I've seen is straight up just taking the piss out of autistic traits that some of these people have and especially when they're shared traits I'm like oh, fuck you it's not the most fun but like I say the autistic people in the show wanted to do the show they signed up for it they went through with it so it's not up to me to be like you've made us into a sideshow you know they can sense if they wanted to do it it's up to them I don't have to watch it but yeah overall I don't hate it I don't love it I'll probably continue watching it as it comes, but I'll continue to have my little niggles with it. And that's all they really are. They are just little niggles. It's just, this could have been done a little better in my opinion. This could have been better. This could have been done like this, like blah, blah, blah. It's just opinion. It's no, you know, I'm not saying it is objectively bad or that it's objectively good. It's, it's just a show that I watched and have thoughts on. And yeah, he's washing himself very loudly. Sorry if you can hear little cat licks all the way through this. Can you? <laughs> you can see his paw. Paw. Anyway, um, if you like content like this, I make content about autism and fashion predominantly with some like weird vintage stuff thrown in. And I also do info dumps where I just autistically blabber at people. And by people, it could be you if you wanted to like and subscribe. I hate asking that, but apparently people forget. So if you have enjoyed this, it'd be really lovely if you did like and subscribe. You've made it all the way through the end. Through the end. Whoever you are, wherever you are, I hope you have a lovely morning, evening, afternoon, day, week, month, year. And I'll see you again in a few days.